Hi, Jim Hudson here again, Tire Changer Product Manager. Let's talk about some, some more advanced assemblies here. So advanced more in terms of the way they're clamped than it, the way they're actually changed. You're gonna see a lot of familiar procedures here, tips and tricks uh, to change the tires. It's really just a matter of clamping them. Uh, so obviously I have a reverse drop center wheel here. So I can tell that by looking at a few different things. I, I can see that obviously my, uh, my valve stem is sunk down deep into the, into the, the wheel and if I rotate the tire around, I can see on the back of the wheel here, this is actually my drop center. And here's actually you know, a more, uh, more commonly located valve stem as well. So I'm gonna need to change this tire upside down on the machine. That's okay though, I've got a flange plate here that I'll use to do that, to protect that front face of the wheel. What I'll do is I'll clamp this, or I, rather I will uh, secure this flange plate to the front of the wheel. I've got it configured for four lugs. This is an eight lug wheel, so I have four, uh, four pins in my flange plate. And I'll go ahead and put in my, my bolts here. Now I don't have to put a wrench on these bolts. They don't really carry a load, they just hold the flange plate in position while I, uh, while I clamp it. So I'll remove my standard uh, platen, store that. So I'm ready to go ahead and clamp upside down now without any fear at all of, of um, damaging the front face of this wheel. Again, super thankful for that wheel lift. This is a really heavy and unwieldy uh, assembly. And I'll rotate until I hear those three drive dowels drop down into place. So from here on out, I can clamp like usual. And again, tire changing process itself uh, will employ a lot of really familiar techniques. Set my diameter here. Break my beads. Give a little bit of bead lube here. Never really hurts, especially a good idea if you know you're doing a flat repair, you have to go back on with this particular tire. Um, you know, not all tires are discard tires. So this just really helps release, bit, relieve that bead stress, give it an added level of safety. Now I'll bring my roller around. I'll bring my, excuse me, my TPMS around. And if I have to, I can make a little gap again for my, my tool hook to go down into making sure that all the way around the edge of the wheel, I've got the tire falling down into the drop center. And then lastly, I'll just bump up a little bit on with that lower roller. You can really see it help to kind of relieve some of that bead stress as I slowly rotate off. So, I have a fairly large wheel here. Like I said, this is a 28 inch wheel and tire. So I need to hold this end of the tire in the drop center while I demount the bottom bead with a lower roller. What I have though at my disposal is a lifting ledge on my, on my pusher arm here. So I can use this as a third arm basically that I can spin way out here on these larger, heavier assemblies to help keep that tire in the drop center. That frees up both hands to work right here where I need them to uh, on this really, really big tire. and get that out of the way. I'll even use my, uh, my wheel lift as a tire lift in this case. Again, these, these, these tires, really the, the most difficult process about changing these um, is just the fact that the wheels uh, and tires are just large. The techniques are fairly universal. that up. Sometimes these bottom beads will just push right on on these really, really large diameter assemblies. And again, drop center, drop center, drop center. I just want to make sure that I'm keeping this tire tracking in the drop center all the way around while I'm mounting it. So I'll bring down my roller 
and my bead press and start to rotate around. I can adjust each as, it, as I, uh, independently as I need, rotate just as fast or as slowly as I need as tension starts to build and get this tire mounted up. All right, so I have a 19.5 assembly here. This is a 14 ply tire. Um, so it's a, this is a fairly difficult assembly, but again, I've got all the power I need, all the tools I need. I just need to employ some different techniques and some different clamping to handle this wheel. So I have a 19.5 um, clamping plate here that I'm gonna put down first. So in addition to this 19.5 plate, there's a half height adapter included in the thick bead kit that actually installs in place of the platen to keep the stack height low on, on 16 and a half inch and 17 and a half inch wheels with reverse drop centers. So let's get back to this 19.5 here. Uh, I land my traction pin up here with the hole in the, in the, the flange plate, or excuse me, the 19.5 uh, plate. Use my wheel lift again to lift this really heavy assembly up into place. Kind of line everything up by hand. I've got a, uh, I've got a, a traction pin here that I have to install between the wheel and the, uh, and the, the adapter plate. And then an aluminum cone goes down on top, clamps against the wheel. So this is what sandwiches everything together. Usually I'll give it just a little bit of a, kind of a little bit of a shake just to make sure everything stays kind of centered up while I'm cinching it down. But from here on out, the changing process is much the same. I do have the thick bead, hit, the, the thick bead hook mounted on my machine. So this hook has a larger radius to help handle those really, really thick bead bundles like this 19.5. But I adjust my diameter, I break my beads, I'll give it a little bit of bead lube. Um, all the familiar techniques you would use on really any other tire. Let me get that out of the way, do the same thing with my bottom bead. All right. Bring my head down, use that smart set to kind of set my position. If I have to rotate a little bit to get the mount hook to, install, uh, to insert, I can rotate or I can make a gap with my, uh, with my upper roller. Start to pull this head up, making sure that I have the tire feeding in the drop center all the way around. Again, these are, these are, these are techniques that really work on every tire and wheel assembly. They're just good to kind of burn into your mind as uh, is really good go-to's. Right, just push that bottom bead right off. If my bead gets stuck on the hook, I can just lower my uh, lower the hook, make a gap here, and then uh, you know raise the hook back up again to uh, to get it off of there. Get that out of the way. push my bottom bead off with the lower roller. Again, a very familiar process. Just a much heavier tire in this case. So I'll let that hang there for just a quick minute. Use my wheel lift to help me get that heavy tire up and off of there. And this is a 14 ply tire. It's a fairly stiff tire, but uh, with a little bit of technique, still very, very easy to change. Bring my mount head down. Kind of might have to set my TPMS position here. Lean into the machine, use that control console as kind of a, uh, a traction point for yourself to get these really, really stiff bottom beads started. Again, I can get my, get my hook out of there if it's stuck. I definitely don't want to mount over that hook. Uh, so I want to make sure that's, that's up all the way in the stowed position. Go ahead and mount.
Fairly difficult tire, heavy duty tire and wheel assembly. Uh, done very easily. Now with this tire, I'm gonna have to air up past 40 PSI. My automatic inflation will only go to 40 PSI. But if I need to, for whatever reason, go past 40 PSI, um, for, like for example, on these heavy duty tires, I press and hold my manual inflation button. So if I'm pressing and holding that, I get a, a, a inflation pulse and a pressure check. Um, so I always know how much air is in that tire. And I can do that up to 60 PSI. All right, so we got this 19.5 tire change fairly easily. You've seen a wide range of tires change, so everything from basic, change, uh, basic tire and wheel assemblies to advanced to reverse, and all the way up now to 19.5. So very capable machine, but for more operation videos, tips and tricks on our other equipment, visit hunter.com. Thanks for watching.